I'm doing uh, differentials now on uh, on the Chevy on the truck. So I just did the uh, rear differential, which is very easy, uh, except uh, I couldn't break the uh, the fill-in plug loose because you always want to try first break the uh, fill plug loose. Make sure you can take it off. Don't ever drain a differential. And then later you'll realize you can't fill it, you know, because your freaking your plug is seized up. So this was pre-corroded, so I put a brand new one, uh, made out of bronze, so it'll never corrode again. And then, uh, so now I gotta move to the front. So the rear, I put the uh, Mobile One uh, 140 because I'm towing a trailer, so it's a heavier oil. But the front, I'm gonna put the. Uh, just the standard, your standard, uh, what is it, 7590. That's what I'm putting in the front. So, anyways, that's the front differential. You can see the wetness of it. I think that seal is going bad. So, I'll see if it's, but it could be, uh, you know, I had the uh, coolant leak. And uh, the coolant leak, when it dries up, the antifreeze, it's going to be sticky and look like oil, too. So, and that was on top. So that could have been it, but I'll drain it. See if it's uh, if it's low. I'll pop this drive shaft out and replace the seal. At least on this side, the other side seemed to be dry. But anyway, so uh, so that's your drain plug here, and that's your fill hole. So you always first break the uh, fill hole loose. Don't ever drain the uh, fluid from the differential, and then you won't be able to break this one loose. And then what? You're dry. You can't drive it anywhere. And so anyways, this is the oil from the uh, rear differential, and you can see it's pretty nice and clean. There's no blackness to it or anything. It's got a little bit of color, but it's pretty much golden oil. So I'm hoping this will be the same, so let me unscrew this one. Yep. Put a light through it so you can see the oil. This one's got a little more darkness to it, definitely, much darker oil, so maybe this one wasn't swapped, I don't know, I have to look at the uh, records. So this is the drain plug, it looks like a porcupine, with metal shavings. The rear differential drain plug didn't have anything. This one's got a lot of uh, build up here, yeah, a lot of metal shavings. So you can see it looks like a porcupine. Like I said, the uh, the oil is black and almost like metallic. So anyways, I attempted to fix the parking brake on this truck. <laughs> There's just nothing to fix here. It is so corroded. I mean, look at this. When I took it apart, the pads, everything, actually the pads were broken. And it was jammed in there and rubbing. I heard every time we drove this truck it was rubbing and rubbing and uh, and this is what came out of it the springs everything just corroded and where the spring attached to the shoes the brake shoes I mean there's just uh, nothing there so to fix this I would have to replace almost everything here on both sides because I'm sure the other side is no different so I'm just gonna give up on the uh, parking brake it's it's got a disc brake, you know, so you still have brakes. This is just for the parking on the inside. And uh I'm somewhat surprised how this thing is designed. The year 2000, this whole axle is you got bolts in here and it's removable. You can pull the whole axle without taking the uh, cover off the differential and removing the little C-clip. Unfortunately, it looks like this this year was the only year with this axle. <laughs> It's always, everything's odd about this truck. Same thing with this hanger where I tried to buy it. This was the only year they had this thing on. And it seems like year 2000 they pretty much redesigned this whole truck. Even though the 99 was the first year. After one year they redesigned everything on it. So it's just an odd, odd truck to work on. But anyways, so... There will be no parking brakes. I mean, there's just... Uh, it's all corroded. There's nothing left. So here are the uh, shoes from the other side. It's all metal. There's no... See how this one's got the wear material on it? It's got nothing. It just was worn down to nothing. 
I guess the brakes were rubbing because here are the cables. See the cables all corroded on the inside and uh, I couldn't even move these cables anymore so I had to cut everything out just basically eliminate the parking brake which I never use it anyways it was actually just you could hear it grinding in there all these parts just rubbing on everything so I took it all out who needs a freaking parking brake well guys this is hopefully the last repair I gotta replace the uh, clutch the fan clutch here's the new one and uh, what happened basically I put the clutch in here fan facing down and all the fluid leaked out which shouldn't leak out there's a seal in the back that should hold all the fluid and uh, and everything leaked out out of here so I got a new one from uh, Rock Auto made in USA actually they give you like uh, 36,000 miles warranty on this thing it was only forty three dollars and it was sixty bucks for the Chinese made uh, Duralas brand brand from uh, AutoZone so this is why I always shop Rock Auto It's aluminum housing, so you don't want to over tighten it. I hit it on the on the lowest setting, and then I'm just gonna hand tighten it. Okay, I'm just screw this baby on. And then we'll get my my wrench and uh, adjustable wrench. Okay, so I just use my homemade wrench and then adjustable wrench and tighten it up. And that should be it. I mean, all I have to do is just put all this together and then mechanically I hope this is the last last repair. Of course, I still have to do all this uh, all this work underneath here with rust. But that's just uh, rust prevention and painting. But mechanically, I think I'm done. There's really nothing else I can think of fixing that could possibly fail later on. So here I am fixing more stuff. I took it for a spin and ABS brakes were going nuts. And what happened is the rust built up. Basically the metal swelled up underneath the sensor and lifted the sensor up. And it wasn't making a contact. Well, it's not supposed to make a contact, but come close to that little serrated wheel. And it, ABS brakes were kicking out, kicking in and out. So, boy, it was a bitch to take this thing off. The, the bolt in here, as you can see, I had to take, a, I don't know if you can see it, I had to take a wrench one size bigger, grind it a little bit, and try to pound it in there because there was no hex left in this bolt. But I got it out, so thank God I'll, get, I'll put a new one in there. So I'm going to put a earplug in. And clean all the way around so the sensor sits nice and flat and deep in there also once you got the ABS sensor out now you got access to grease this uh, bearing this whole housing doesn't have any fittings to grease it but this hole actually you can pump some grease in there because these are sealed bearing hubs and then uh, and that's what usually kills the bearing it's when they go dry if you lubricate a bearing it'll last pretty much forever so you want to pump some grease in there so I got a pump here I'm gonna push it, rig it up with some clamp something to and keep pumping till I got grease coming out of the seals. And I'll put nice uh, mobile one synthetic grease in there. Okay, so the last thing you want to do is just run a zip tight to keep that wire away from the shield. I don't know if you look at it, if you can see it or not, the wire actually got melted. Well, just the, the housing of the wire. The wires inside are still good. But the casing got melted because uh, without the zip tie, it's touching the shield. And the shield obviously gets hot from the uh, brake rotor. And it starts melting the wire. So a simple zip tie keeps it away. It's just another poor design. 